right, in this video, I'm gonna show you some different techniques for removing hair, uh, stray hairs, hairs that you don't want to be there, and this really will work for other things as well. Um, so I am all for natural hair. I love natural beauty, you know, that's not what this is about, but in some cases, you know, stray hairs can be distracting. Um, you know, maybe your client refused to get a hairstylist or forgot to use hairspray. <laughs> maybe it was just a windy and humid day and you know, you just can't control that no matter how great your hair is. So um, I'm gonna show you a few tools in Photoshop on what to do uh, when you want to remove stray hairs. Before we get started, I wanna let you know I am using a Wacom Intuos Medium uh, stylus tablet. It is awesome, I love it. it this allows me to really um, use the brushes like I'm painting or drawing on a piece of paper. Um, I'm a drawing artist originally, and so I really like how this feels when I'm doing edits like this, when I'm selecting, when I'm uh, painting, doing all kinds of special effects. Uh, actually having a pen in my hand really helps me uh, to get these things more accurate. And honestly, this kind of editing is not fun with a mouse or a trackpad, even worse on a laptop, which is, I edit with a laptop. So using a stylus and a pen, it kind of makes it fun. It makes it natural. It makes it way faster um, and much less carpal tunnel <laughs> in the end. All right, so in Photoshop, uh, you've got basically um, two or three tools for removing stuff that you don't want in a photo. The first is the clone tool. If you hit S on your keypad, you'll see over here, it go, it's highlighted. Now how this works is if you hold Alt and then you click somewhere, that's gonna take a sampling of this area that I clicked on and then I can paint I can paint, as you see over here on the right side, you see the little marker moving. I'm basically painting from somewhere else in the photo. It's kind of like copy and paste, but with a paintbrush attached to it, and it moves around. So that's pretty cool. That's one way you can remove things. You know, you could say you find a stray hair you don't want, Alt, left click somewhere, then let go of Alt, and then you can paint over that hair. Pretty sweet, right? But you get some edges issues. You know, the patterns don't quite match up. You could make it really small, but the same problem would still exist. That's the clone stamp tool. Next tool you've got is the heel tool, which I love. If you hit J on your keyboard, it'll automatically select your heel tool. If you hold down your mouse over here, make sure you're on the spot healing brush tool. That means it's gonna use a brush, you know, a circle or, or any kind of brush that you're using in Photoshop. That's what's gonna heal underneath it, whatever you paint on top. So zooming in here, hitting J, I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. By pressing the left or right bracket buttons on your keyboard, you can shrink or enlarge your brush. All right, so if I paint over this hair, boom, look at that, pretty much gone. A little stem there at the end. When I discovered that the healing tool could do this, I freaked out. I was so excited because the clone, cloning was just a pain to match up and make look natural and took a lot of time. Um, and you know, the possibilities with this healing brush are, are almost endless. I've removed cars, I've removed um, posts, uh, trash, birds, people. You can use the, the healing tool for a lot of creative things. Um, also retouching, when I'm zooming in up from someone's face to remove pimples or blackheads or you know, just uh, blemishes that they don't want there, uh, the healing tool will do magic on it, so I love it. But if you can imagine with a real uh, frizzy picture like this, zooming in to remove all those stray hairs with the healing tool will still take a lot of time. So I'm gonna show you a combination of both of these techniques that I like to use most in some situations. Now, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna paint a new background. I know that sounds crazy. We're gonna make a new background. We're gonna lay it on top of the faces and we're gonna use that background to cut out where these stray hairs are. Um, and. Um, it's really not that hard. So let's zoom out. I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard. I'm using this square selection tool over here. And I'm gonna select a piece of the background that is pretty solid. Now this technique really only works on images with a background that's blurry, that's a pattern, uh, a straight color, a texture like a wall. This technique will not work very well on images where there's a busy background with, you know, uh, buildings and angles and people and stuff in the background. It's really uh, best for pictures with a bokeh background, which means blurry background. And that's why I love shooting portraits that way. So I've just copied and pasted a square selection of the background. And when I did control V, it pasted into a new layer. As you can see here, I can move this around. I'm gonna move it on top of this girl's face and I'm gonna zoom in. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna remove this little edge over here. So I'm gonna use just the erase tool, E. Erase that little spot of the girl on the on the square that I got. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna 
go over here in my layers dialog and I'm going to make this 50% 50% visible or you can press 5 on your keypad and it'll drop it down to 50% uh, opacity cool so here's the cool trick I'm going to use masking masking is a fancy tool in Photoshop that allows you to make visible or invisible parts of a layer based on your brushing and painting of black and white so if I, del if I use the eraser tool on part of this image like I just did, I can't really get that back. But if I mask it out with black, then it'll go away visibly, but it's still technically there. Let me show you what I mean. Down here, you've got this white square with a black circle. I'm gonna press that. Now I've got this new little section to the right of the layer. This is the mask. So if I alt click it, the mask is white. That means everything is visible. Let me put this up to 100%. So white means it's there. White is a yes. <laughs> pressing the white square with the black circle in the middle, and here we have the mask over here. Now right now the mask is white. That means everything that's white is visible. If I paint black onto this mask, it's gonna disappear. But I wanna do the opposite. I wanna paint the background in so that I can cover up the, the stray hairs that I don't like. By selecting the mask over here, you can see the white square around it. Control I will invert it or turn it black. Now I'm gonna use my brush tool with a white color. So brush, make sure you've got white over here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna right click and make my brush not super soft, but a little bit hard on the edges. Okay. And in my brush settings, I'm actually gonna move my spacing down so that there's not jumps and bumps in between my brushes. I'm gonna make it pretty smooth. Okay, cool. So watch what happens. If I click on the, the mask over here and I'm painting white, look at that. The background layer that I copy and paste is now appearing. Pretty sweet. That's the basics of this technique is you're painting in a good background area on top of the bad hairs that you don't want to be there. Pretty nifty, huh? All right, so because uh, you can see it's much more natural than the cloning tool. And because this is masking, this is not destructive. That means that the image that I erased is not really erased. It's still there. It's just the mask over here is telling it black is not there, white is here. So that's what non-destructive editing means, and that's the best way to go. So I'm going to smooth out these edges by making a smoother brush this time, a little bit bigger. Okay. <clears throat> got to make sure your mask is selected or you can't paint onto it. So I'm painting white. Look at that. It's a, oops. So that, see that edges is a little bit more smooth, a little more sneaky. It's kind of creeping its way into the image, not, not super noticeable. You can even blend it even better by using a 50% transparent brush to kind of brush it in in certain areas. You know, make it look natural. Um, that's, that's the whole trick. So you see how it's kind of fading in? It's sort of, it's like it's easing in the image that I'm painting. Let's come over here. Gorgeous mom. Good friend of mine and, and also my hairstylist, ironically. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna select a good area. We don't really need that much because we only have a little spot over here and maybe over here. So select with M, like Control C for copy, Control V for paste. All right, makes a new layer. And I'm gonna move this over on top of her face. Gotta move it up a little bit to cover up all those hairs. Now we're gonna make the mask. Here it is, select the mask, Control I to invert it. That means that makes it black, which means not there, right? Not visible. And then we're gonna paint in white on top of her hairs that we don't want there. So B for brush, white brush at 100% opacity, we're painting it in. And like I said earlier, this is non-destructive editing, so I can go back and totally redo this. If I don't like my edges, or I missed a hair, I wanna move it in or out, I can just totally rebrush this mask. And none of the layer that I'm you know, masking out is gone. It's all just there waiting for me. Make a little bit of a buffer around the head. A little bit of extra area. Get those stray hairs, stray hairs. Probably sounds like I'm drawing on a piece of paper with a marker. But that is my stylus I got on my tablet. All right, so we got the hard edge. We want to fix that. As you can see here, pretty hard. Not a lot of soft naturalness to it. Brush, make it a bit larger, make it soft. Okay, I'm going to brush it in. Okay, it's getting better. Now I'm hitting the edge of my copied area, so now I'm kind of wishing I, I copied and pasted more of this background because I'm hitting the limits of it. I'm going to use a soft brush on black to kind of knock that away. 
There you go. So you can kind of see, actually, I should have copied a higher section because this part is bright behind her head. Um, and I've got kind of a dark spot. So lesson learned, uh, make sure you're copying an area that will match what's gonna be replaced and make it a natural bloom. Like over here, pretty natural. You can't tell really, unless I do before and after, it's pretty good, good blending. But over here, I got a darker spot. I should have selected higher in the image, like up here or something like that, you know, instead of, instead of down there. All right, so that's that. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.